Hello, everyone, and welcome to a command prompt demonstration. This is the second in a series of videos for CITUS. And today we will be covering CITUS configuration. My name is Zach Tedder, and I'm an engineer at Command Prompt. And for the better part of a year, I have been doing a deep dive into this fascinating PostgreSQL extension. And today we're going to go over some configuration settings to get you up and running. So what we covered last time in our first video was why CITUS is a good fit for multi-tenant software as a service applications and why it's a good fit for real-time analytics dashboards and applications. We also reviewed the scalability features of CITUS as well as its structure. Then we did a demo installation so um, we could see what installing CITUS on a new mis machine was like. You can find the link to this first video in the description. What we're going to cover today is a multi-node configuration, and we are also going to configure the coordinator node for the CITUS cluster. Please note that the configuration settings for this cluster is just a very basic level to get you up and running. All right, so in order to find the PostgreSQL conf file, uh, the configuration file for PostgreSQL, we can use a simple command, uh, show config file from the psql prompt, and you can do it using your super user with the command shown. And then we're going to make some changes to PostgreSQL conf. We're going to change listen addresses to the wildcard so that Postgres listens on all networks and not just the local host. And th this is going to help connect the machines together. Then we need to change the wall level to logical, as covered in the previous video. CITUS uses uh, logical replication to move the shards of data around. Then we are going to add CITUS to the shared preload libraries so that we can then load it into our database. So let's do that now. And we are going into the CITUS coordinator container that we set up in the previous video. And from here, we are going to issue the command for Postgres to use psql to make the command of showing the config file. And that tells us where our config file is. It is in etc. Postgres equal 15 main. And let's edit it. We are going to find the listen addresses line. And we are going to change this from localhost to the wildcard. Like I said before, this helps us our, all our machines listen uh, not outside of their own private network or outside of uh, their localhost network, I should say. And then we are going to change the wall level. We're changing this from the default replica to logical because we need a logical level of wall files in order to use logical replication to move those shards of data around. Now we are going to add to the shared preload libraries. We are going to add in CITUS so that we can load CITUS into our database. All right. Now that we have made those changes to PostgreSQL conf, we are going to make a change to the host-based authentication file, the HBA file. And you can find this in the same way that you found the PostgreSQL conf file um, using show HBA file instead of config file. And within that file should already be some settings that allow PostgreSQL to communicate within its local host for IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, we are going to add a line that allows the worker nodes in the private IP address to communicate with one another. And then after we do that, we are going to restart PostgreSQL to enable all of these changes that we've made to the HBA file and the PostgreSQL comp file. So let's hop in here and we can Search for this file, same way. And there it is, it's in the same directory as it will be most of the time. 
So we can just come over here, change that, and we're in. And now let's come down here. And as you can see, we have these two lines, um, which indicate that PostgreSQL is able to communicate with the other machines in the local host network. But we are going to add a line that allows the use of any IP address in the private network, as long as it starts with 10. We're going to set this to the Oscar the Grouch password encryption method of Scram. All right. And now that we've done that, we are going to restart PostgreSQL. And let's check the status to make sure that it did indeed restart. And we're at five seconds. So that tells us that we have restarted. All right. Moving on to setting up our Postgres password. So we need to make sure that we have a password set because we are going to be entering that into a PG pass file in the next step. We are also going to be creating the demo database with which we are going to load the Citus extension in. So let's do that. All right. We are going to issue the command for Postgres to use psql. That command will be the meta command of password. So we can set the Postgres password, which is a secret. All right, and we've done so successfully. Now that we've issued that, we are going to create the database for our demo. And we are going to now load into that demo database our Citus extension. And there we have it. So now we are going to become the Postgres user, and then we are going to create the PG Pass file. The PG Pass file allows mainly passwords and other credentials to go into this file uh, so that Postgres can connect with other instances without having to actually enter the password manually. So it helps automate the process and is very good for security as well. Speaking of security, after we create the PG Pass file, we are going to then change the permissions to read and write only for the Postgres user and no other permissions for other users. So the structure of the PG Pass file goes host, port, database, username, password. We are going to be issuing wildcards for the host name, port, and database so that we can seamlessly connect with all of the other nodes in this cluster without having to enter too many lines. And for this demo, we're going to be using the Postgres user and the super secret password. So let's do that. We'll start by becoming the Postgres user. And from here, we are going to create our PG Pass file. Doing it as the Postgres user ensures that it's already owned by the Postgres user, um, which is important for the seamless communication between the machines. And now that we've done that, we are going to change the permissions to 600, which is read and write only for the owner of the file, which is Postgres. And so let's then enter our information. We are going to, again, be issuing wildcards for the host name, the port, and the database. So it can connect to any of those, but it has to connect as the Postgres user with our secret password. All right. And just to reiterate, each one of these steps needs to be carried out on each node within the Citus cluster. So we need to set the configuration settings in PostgreSQL conf, pghba conf, and then we need to make sure that we have a working password for the Postgres user. 
we need a database in which we load our site as extension. And we are creating a PG pass file for the seamless communication between the machines so we don't have to enter a password every time we want to do something. All right, now that we have completed our multi-node configuration, so all of the configuration settings that need to be changed on each machine, we will now issue some commands just from the coordinator. We are going to tell that coordinator that it is, in fact, the coordinator. And then we were going to add some nodes to be our worker nodes where the data will be distributed. After that, we're going to confirm that we have effectively set our worker nodes to be just that. So let's come on over here and we are going to go into our demo database and we will select Citus set coordinator host and this is where you enter your IP address or the DNS. We're going to use Citus for our Citus container and we are working with the 5432 default PostgreSQL port. And there we have successfully set the coordinator to be the coordinator. Now let's add some worker nodes. We will select from Citus add node and we are going to be adding worker one. Um, again, put your IP address in there if you do not have a DNS for your machine. And there we go. We have successfully set one worker node and now we have set two worker nodes. So let's make sure that we have properly set that up by looking at the Citus git active worker nodes. And there we have it. You can see that we have two workers, worker one and worker two. And there you have it. Now we have successfully set up one coordinator node and two worker nodes in our Citus cluster. We are ready to start distributing data horizontally instead of vertically. We're going to spread the data out across multiple nodes. And we have in this video covered multi-node configuration. That's the configuration for PostgreSQL Conf, PGHBA Conf and setting up PG Pass just so we can get things working. And we have also set up the coordinator node configuration, which was essentially telling each node what its job is. Next up in our series of Citus videos, we'll be executing the data across nodes. So let's continue this conversation in the comments. Please let us know what you think, comments, questions, concerns. Thank you so much for your time.